30 plus years. I started in 1988 doing REOs and foreclosures. Uh, by the age of 21, I had already thrown out my first 100 families. And if you're wondering if that has any deep lasting psychological scars, the bills to my therapist will confirm that. Most people know me because in uh, 2007, I left the bank and I started to teach short sales. I became the guy in distressed properties. I'm very proud of the work that I did between 2007 and 2010. And as all of you know, short sales ended in 2010 for some remarkable reason, or at least that was the perception of the real estate market. Uh, in fact, it did not. That was the bottom of the market. And it took quite a while for that market to change. I became quietly a consultant to those that continue to work in the distress field. And I wound up going into marketing because the number one question I kept getting asked was, how do I get more deals? As a consultant, that's generally when you do that, that's what you get asked. How do I get more? Uh, well, it forced me into becoming a professional marketer. I didn't know very much about it at the beginning. I was just self-taught. As someone who had a real estate license in the 90s, I, like you, understood the concept of prospecting. I understood door knocking, cold calling, mailers. And if you don't know this about distressed properties, that is the complete opposite way of approaching a person who's missed payments. In fact, they do not answer phones. They do not answer mail and they hide behind your furniture when you show up at their home. So I had to create some very innovative forms of marketing to get in front of homeowners. Uh, and I did in 2007. I'm actually very proud of the work that we've done. We've been able to help millions of homeowners and millions of real estate agents really throughout the years. I, don't, I always think that it's bled into the millions. Probably it's not, and that's probably just my ego. But in my mind, that's the number, and it makes me happier at night because it's been very hard work being the only guy who wants to talk about distressed property. I feel like Punxsutawney Phil at these moments of going, it's happening again, everyone. Let's talk about it. And nobody likes it. I literally got an email last night from an event we're going to. And the email stated, it's not going to happen in my state, but thanks for the info because someone told me it's not going to happen. I said, I wanted to write back and go, so you believe that the state of Colorado has no forbearance agreements in it because of the pandemic. That's what the email said. Colorado is apparently immune because someone told her and therefore it's not happening in Colorado. So anybody on the call from Colorado, I'm happy to report you're the immune state. That's my life. There aren't, if you say the word distressed property, people believe short sales. If you say the word default, people believe the word REO. Like, it's all wrong. It, it's been wrong. As a guy who started in banking, who's done that for an extended period of time, who's then gone into the field of marketing, it's been difficult. I got to be honest. It's been a struggle to try to convince people to go work on distressed properties. They have gone nowhere. Historically speaking, we generally rotate right around a million properties. So my goal was to see... Can I get you in front of a homeowner? And because of that, I was able to create very innovative marketing that got me named one of the top 100 marketers in America for nine straight years, and also one of the most innovative marketers in America. I'm going to teach all of you that technique today in extreme graphic detail, which I have not done. This will be the third time since I've created that product in front of a live room that's actually streaming and recording. I will show you that technique, and here is why. We have a mission here at Home Advocates. Our goal is to help 1,000 agents or have them join us or to train them, whatever, and to help a million homeowners. I do believe that forbearance agreements are a big deal. I do believe that there are millions and millions of people who are going to wake up one morning and be extremely delinquent. Uh, we were just talking about a news story and we're talking about putting it in the presentation. Uh, we found a CBS piece about forbearance agreements. And it identified a woman having a conversation and worried about losing her home. She was five months behind on payments. And she has no idea of what she's going to do. No idea. This is a common story, okay? And it's going kind of under the radar because there are more renters than homeowners in distress. Their fear on July 1st, because that's when it would officially be over, 
are the renters because they outnumber homeowners. So we will talk about that in more detail. In life, you need either inspiration or desperation. The man I'd like to call mentor and friend, Tony Robbins, had a great quote, and I talk about it. This is an idea I've had for two years. I've wanted to do kind of what we're talking about here. There is no distressed property solution. And I've talked about it with many, many people. I've had meetings with people that I love and care for, and it's never quite been a good fit. When the pandemic hit, I knew that something was going to happen. I didn't know exactly what because people weren't making payments, but I knew I wanted to be into the service of all of you, remarkably. I know it sounds uh, weird, that I kind of chuckled. Those are me stifling my emotions uh, because I'm not very good at them. I'm a banker. I shake people till they bleed money. The video that you saw is every inch of me, or at least how I used to be. Today, I work for the service of real estate agents and homeowners. And if I get a little emotional, I'm working on it with a therapist, just to say it out loud. This is a new life for me, and it's a new opportunity to almost appreciate and enjoy helping people, which I did not before. I was just a speaker. I was paid to go out and speak on short sales and be the banker. This time around, I have a clear mission. And somewhere in the middle of the pandemic, somebody made a phone call and said, do you know what's gonna happen? And I said, yes, I do know what's gonna happen. I said, there are people right now who believe that they don't need to make payments and that the government will fix it. I have monitored this literally every day. It is my, Derek talks about it. I spend hours and hours watching and reading news stories on this topic. I know everything that comes across the wire on the topic. You are lucky if you get four or five stories about a moratorium that's about to be lifted in, we're now what, day six? We're seven days away, right? 23rd, 27th. Today's the 22nd? 23rd. 23rd, seven days away seven days away, and they're still debating whether or not they should extend it again. They can, they can't. They might do it for renters, they might. And that's all I've heard about. Homeowners are gonna wake up and be delinquent. And I pose this all to all of you. Do any of you think that the bank is physically going to forget how many payments you owe them? Right, so I'm gonna talk about it and I'm gonna give you a general idea of what the market has done in those particular cases. Well, in that moment during the pandemic of inspiration and desperation of just enjoying the pandemic, I lived on the beach quietly working on me because that's what you do in those quiet times. I live alone or I did live alone on the beach. A friend called me and he said, what do you think? And I laid out this idea that's in front of you. I'd like to introduce them. Uh, it gives me great honor to work with these people. I work with three of the most brilliant empowered women I know of on the planet who can all outvote me, which gives them a lot of strength in my humble opinion. My CFO, Jen Sassoni, uh, Fritzi Ortiz, and Gina Pasquini. They all hold positions within my company because they are the very best at what they do. I did not pick them. This path I'm on picked them. I just kept running across them. But the biggest issue that I had was making sure that you could get in front of homeowners and connect and engage with them. I'm not good at that, I'm a banker. When I go to the front door, the last time I talked to a homeowner with my marketing set up, went to the front door, I approached, I knocked, I said, hi, my name's Lee, I'm an advocate. I'm here to help you with your alternatives to foreclosure and to discuss possible loan modifications or other alternatives. She stopped, walked, got her checkbook and wrote a check and said, this is all I have in my bank account. Will that be enough for a payment? And I realized in that split second that I would never be able to talk to a homeowner again. I exude banker. I, there's no way around it. I've done it for so many years for so many banks that even when I try to address somebody humbly on an advocate level, they just see a banker showing up at their door. If you're wondering if I showed up in a suit, I did not. I showed up in khakis and a, and a pullover. I was very normally dressed. I still look like a banker. I still talk like a banker. It's what I do. I'm an asset manager at my core for over 30 years, no matter what I've done. I went to the trouble of getting the guy who will speak to you shortly, Derek Kelly. 
I needed a professional connector, an engager, a closer. I can teach you all the expertise I have. I can give you notes. I can turn you into an expert. I can. I've done it. I've done it for 11 years. I'm quite confident I can do it for anybody. What I personally cannot teach, I had to get someone to do it. And I went to great expense. I went way out on a limb and turned my presentation over every day to a man who I call friend, first and foremost. But secondly, somebody who can do something I cannot do. And that takes a lot for me. I operate on an almost ego-based preference all day. Uh, so to literally hand over a clicker to somebody else, it's because he's very, very good at what he does. That's the truth. When you meet homeowners, you have no choice. It's a very difficult situation. And so I've actually written the best part of the day, as has Derek, into this presentation so that you can go after this presentation and start talking to people. Our goal here is to give you actionable information on the day. We want you to start talking to them. You have eight days. I mean, that's just seven days. I keep getting it wrong. Seven days in county. And so I want this all to be very actionable information that will be of an assistant to you. I want to explain myself because you will see me do very weird things like get choked up and things of that nature randomly. Uh, and here's why. And this is just self-revelation about my part that's happened over the last year. I grew up and I'm actually an extremely shy, withdrawn person. I prefer to work alone. I prefer to live alone. I prefer to work alone. I, everything, uh, generally speaking. I've always been that way. I've always felt different than everybody else in the room. I pretty much maintained an F average until I got to the collegiate level and kind of squeaked by with all of that to get to where I am. I'm also extremely dyslexic. And to top it all off, I was bullied probably for four or five years of that schooling period before I took up wrestling, jujitsu, boxing, and all the other things that I've done to try to make myself feel better. None of it did. None of it did. I know one thing about real estate. It is an extremely negative business. It's people talking about the deals they don't get. I can tell you this as well. Over the last year, my father died. My mother almost died in my arms. My daughter almost had something that was going to need a CAT scan. I went through an unreal breakup. I have not let any of that hold me back from who I am and creating this company. Sometimes you have to go beyond yourself and you have to put those negative voices at rest. This is kind of your only moment of be positive. Whatever lenses you're looking through, they're not real. That was yesterday. And looking forward to this is a tough market, it's a tough market for you because you just said it. I mean, that's the truth. When you say it, that's the truth of it. I come here with a message. Don't listen to them. If you believe it in your heart, follow it. That is our goal here today. We work with distressed properties. And truth be told, it's a very tough crowd. Okay, They are very scared people. Because they, in fact, share a problem that you share. 95% of all people share this. I share it. You share it. We all share it. It is the fear of not being able to provide. That's a very real thing. It is the fear of all of us on this planet, in fact. And you're going into the distressed field, so let me bring it back. If you have a fear of being able to provide, if you have fears about getting listings and you're worried about money, all of those things, how are you able to talk to people that are about to lose the single most precious thing in their world? That is very, very difficult. That is why I say what I say. I don't let those things affect me when I teach you. It doesn't matter what happened outside the doors. It doesn't matter what happened before and now. I'm here and my goal is to teach you. That's it. If you go and help someone, I've done what I need to do. And if you go into distress field, you got to know this, they're tough. I mean, they really are. Uh, I talk about the four agreements a little bit later on. I highly recommend it. <laughs> I'm giving you the overview on it because I'm going to talk about it. The only way I've seen that you can get around this, it's been a benefit to my life, is the four agreements, especially with homeowners that are distressed. Can't take it personal. They're, you got to do your best. And they're probably still going to threaten to call the Bureau of Real Estate or Department of Real Estate, depending on where you're watching this. Or, uh, they will. Why? You just delivered bad news to them. It's your fault. 
Personal responsibility is a big deal. And it's very difficult for a homeowner to say, I wasn't able to make the payments and I'm terrified. They're liable to tell you it's your fault because you brought them a notice of default. Welcome to distressed properties. There are a lot of listings. There's a lot of people to help. There's a lot of everything. But it's also, it is what it is. It really is what it is. These are very scared people. And I try to prepare everybody accordingly for it. So today I'm going to just teach you three things. Take people for the live stream. We're just after teaching you three things. One is mindset. I'm going to tell you about the market and what I think and what I see. As somebody who's been in banking for over 30 years, I'm the guy people call when they go, what do you think about forbearance agreements? I had a complete opinion for about the last year on the topic. Uh, I will also certify you all as advocates here today for attending, as well as those on the live stream. Secondly, I will show you marketing. I will show you how to get in front of people. I want you to get in front of people, whether or not you choose to invest anything that I offer you here today, your time here, anywhere, when you watch me or you watch Derek is valuable. So I'm gonna give you the value. I'm gonna certify you all as advocates today. I'm gonna to give you a designation you can actually be proud of. And last but not least, move. This is all Derek. I had to throw him in the car like luggage and drag him around with me across the country. And uh, I am happy to give up I'm here so that he can teach you how to connect with them. Connecting with the homeowner is what's going to turn them into a listing or at least what we call a dignified solution. So let's get started. First and foremost is mindset. Okay, what is the market doing? So some of you already have an idea of what's going to happen with the market. I will give you actual facts, stats, and figures. So first of all, what is an eviction moratorium, a COVID-19 eviction moratorium? Approximately 14 months ago, there was a fear that renters were going to be evicted and that would create a healthcare crisis by putting so many people out onto the street. People were unemployed. So the federal government, uh, the World Health Organization, whatever you want to think of, that's what they did. They stopped that from happening. They were fearful of putting people out during the pandemic, which would increase the pandemic overall. What actually happened because of it, this is actual, they stopped reporting people being laid on credit, making housing and renting payments. And if that isn't enough of a mind blower for you at this moment, let's go a step further. The banks started to offer forbearance agreements blindly. They just printed them out and just sent them off to customers. Maybe you know this or maybe you don't know this. Anybody who's gotten a forbearance agreement who's tried to get a new refinance loan or a loan of any kind has found out since they've done a forbearance agreement, they no longer qualify. That's because a forbearance is a negative thing with the bank and the banking industry. People weren't told that. They just believed, I don't have to make payments and this is a very standard answer with distressed properties. The government will fix it. The government is not going to fix this. People did not make payments. That is a very real, very actual thing that happened, okay? And as we stated at the very top, if anybody fundamentally believes that the bank is gonna forget how many payments they've missed and to not report that on credit when they turn credit back on, they have been misled. And I think in these particular cases, homeowners are misled because truthfully, this way the banks don't have to declare losses. It's actually an accounting change which keeps them from showing a loss of income and profit. That's why Wells Chase and B of A showed no significant changes in their stock over the last year. They're not reporting loss. We all know this, okay? I've heard reports as high as 75% of all homeowners took a forbearance agreement. That's a really staggering number, okay? Whatever number you believe, let's just go with a low one. A couple million people took it. A couple million people not paying the bank equates to a lot of money and it would show up in a profit and loss situation. I can see no records where Wells Chase and B of A did anything other than set aside money, but what they did is forbearance agreements. They made an accounting change. The loan's just gonna start in six months. We'll give it an extension, it's another accounting change. And that's what's occurring. 
But again, I will say this. From the initial forbearance agreements to people not making payments right now, that's the situation we're in. And in seven days, I'll get this right, eventually, eight days. Eight days. Eight days. No, I keep days, getting it wrong. Days, days, what am I on? All right. I've been on the road too long. It's all coming to play. And I will say this again, because I know I'm recording. The only thing they are talking about extending is for renters. And in fact, they're claiming that it's still a health care crisis. They are not saying that for people who have mortgages. They're saying it for renters. The estimated number of renters that I have heard range all the way up to 25 million people who've missed payments. That's a big number too. So you can believe whatever numbers you want. You can go and do the research. We all know this about the World Wide Web. You can find whatever you want to find to help yourself sleep at night on the web. Whatever your politics are, whatever, whatever your beliefs are. I am forced to look at all of them and try to find a middle because I am employed by about a thousand real estate agents to look into distressed property. My final answer is this. It's a lot of renters that could be evicted a lot being more than a million. And when it comes to homeowners, we generally average about a million people delinquent, plus or minus. In 2007, they said it would be catastrophic if we had another million people go delinquent. And we saw what happened. Uh, okay, let's just go with a low figure and toss another million onto the pile for this time around. Will it be catastrophic? No, we keep accelerating in prices. We just raised the... Uh, the uh, median price again by 26% year over year. It's accelerating at such a pace, it's almost ridiculous. Why? Artificially low interest rates driven down because of the pandemic to continue to inspire people to purchase and keep the economy alive. And number two, lack of inventory. Where did the inventory go? Well, during the last crash, we, made, we took REOs away from real estate agents and just started selling them directly to Blackstone and other corporate entities so that they could no longer trade in gold or silver or bullion for that matter. They now trade in real estate. Blackstone, I was just got a report, Blackstone just bought another 141,000 properties or another company and they're just consuming everything. They are becoming the largest property solution uh, for Wall Street at the moment. They are massive. They are just a massive entity. They're buying everything that isn't bolted down. Believe what you want to believe. Do I think that a million properties or two million properties would have an effect? Maybe it'll plateau the prices for a little while, but we have such a lack of inventory, it's a big deal. It really is. We lack housing, okay? The builders will never catch up to it. The interest rate will have to come up. They can't keep it down forever, even though we're on like a third year of the two or second or third year of the cycle trying to keep this thing down. I think it's about the third year of us constantly Letting it go down, it'll all change. It has to. And we're about to watch this all play out. And the tipping point for that to happen is the eviction moratorium, for it, which takes us back to where we started with this particular point. And that point being is whatever you want to believe, just see what happens on July 1st. Second, what is a forbearance agreement and what is a loan mod? These are just technical definitions they're both very bank things done by very bank people like myself or an asset manager. A forbearance agreement, just to keep it simple, is taking payments and tacking it onto the back end after asking a bank for it because you don't have the ability to make the current payment, which is why people have found out that they are unable to get additional credit even though they're not reporting it on credit. The banks are aware of it. They are sharing the information, apparently. I know how they do it. I figured it out. But anybody who's taken a forbearance agreement, we had this happen yesterday, because my mom got a forbearance agreement on one of her rental properties, and then she tried to refinance it, and they denied her because she got a forbearance agreement. Right. And then I explained to him how it happened, and he goes, that's how it happened? I said, that's how they found out. And I will share. Homeowners tell banks when they refi, that they received a forbearance agreement because they believe that there is no impact to what it will do to them. When you tell a bank, even a loan shark, that you took a forbearance and I'd like to borrow money, 
you've told them, I didn't have the ability to pay before, but hey, give me more money right now. That's how bad the misrepresentation on forbearance was. People don't know that it is a negative thing. Let's cut to the chase. You're asking for six months of no payments because you can't make payments. It's as simple as it can be. Which takes us to a loan modification. Again, a very negative thing for a homeowner, but they believe it is a good thing, right? They get to keep their house. We get to stay in the house. Truth is simpler than that. The truth is, it is changing the terms of the existing agreement without underwriting. It's a technical it's done by a guy like me at a desk, depending on my mood, depending on what day, depending if my boss yelled at me, depending if I went through yet another messy breakup that day, I can throw your file in the trash and there is no loan mod without any repercussion whatsoever, which means as many of you have learned doing distressed properties, the guys and gals who do that are generally very crappy human beings, right? We know how much you real estate agents make and it, Kind of internally bothers us that we're doing all the work loan mods short sales forbearances the bank people actually do all the work they don't really get any of the credit for it everybody else is just kind of standing around while we do the work in the case of a loan modification homeowners once again fundamentally believe that it's like getting a, a new loan like it's been remodified for them and it's okie dokie right they miss payments and in the days when we actually reported to credit, which was about 14 months ago, does it feel like an Avengers movie? Like we just snapped off for 14 months and then just snapped back on, back in place, and everything's gone back to normal. I'm from California, so being here in Texas, it really feels like the snap. Like we just got live music. We just got to go back to restaurants. I come out here and it's like, it's normal. They don't even care. You guys don't even carry masks in your car. I mean, that's, wow, it's really back to normal here. I should have probably have gone to Florida first, where it's really, really normal. They're back to whatever it is Floridians do. They're wild out there. But that's the truth of those two documents. They are the two most popular things. Those are the things that homeowners are going to ask. Those are the things that are going to be pushed by the bank. But make no mistake about this. They are not positive things for the homeowner. Okay? They are negative things that can affect their credit. And that's what's most important. They will be told by attorneys, by other real estate agents, by the banks themselves, without accountability, that these are positive things that will keep them in their house. I guess there is a level of truth to that. Third point, what will happen to homeowners who still cannot make their payment or never made a payment to begin with? Good question, I don't know. I have heard reports when it comes to people making payments. I can give you some real simple stats. The first numbers I heard were anywhere to two to three million people coming online July 1st. Anywhere from one to three million is what I quote. One to three million people will wake up on July 1st or some date thereafter, depending on your state, depending on when that's lawsuits happening. Let's just say like Florida, because they've gone back online. By the way, the pandemic's been over the moratorium's been over in uh, Florida since the beginning of June. So let's talk about that. Homeowners just woke up one day to find out credit got turned back on and the bank started foreclosing again. They woke up, they were three months late, six months late, nine months late, a year late, 18 months late. The people who were late before the pandemic went right back to where they were before, plus the tacked on dates that they didn't pay because banks don't forget. They're like elephants. They keep track of that stuff. They don't. It's a little counter inside of a computer. It, just, it does all the work. That's where we are. So the people that were delinquent before are the people that are delinquent now. Somebody tried to explain, well, the people that were delinquent before probably got forbearance agreements. I said, I have never heard in 30 plus years of working in a bank, working in real estate, of a bank willing to give out an 18 month to two year forgiveness of a loan and turn it into a forbearance agreement. Have not ever heard of that. The longest I've heard of is six months of payments tacked onto the back end of a loan, maybe a year, special circumstances, maybe it's a VA loan, 
right? And they had an advocate or somebody working for them. We had that case and we've talked about it a little bit while we've been out on tour. But that's the truth. Nobody wants to talk about the truth. It's the renters. It's not the homeowners. It's the renters we need to worry about. Okay, I'm here to worry about the homeowners. I'm worried very much for the homeowners who believe these things. What's going to happen? They're going to wake up and they're going to be delinquent. They're going to actively be in foreclosure. And that's really what matters. So when will it end? July 1st. As much. It's already over in Florida. They were going to do it in all of the red states. But there was a federal case that was held up by the Biden administration who sued and stopped the moratorium in those states. Not Florida, because they don't care. It's Florida. And good for them, by the way. This is the correct thing to do. I know it sounds really harsh on my part, but I'm going to be a banker here for just a split second. Yeah, they took out the money. I'm sorry you lost your job, but at the end of the day, you put your name on a contract. That's it. That's the bottom line. I live in a universe where if you don't pay, you don't get it. That's it. It's as simple as that. Homeowners really want to be bailed out. Now, I'm going to give you the most sickening fact that I know of right now, which when I said it yesterday, made a woman's jaw drop. Wasn't the fact that there were no late payments, there, that nobody's been reported for being late. None of that. It's when I looked at her and said, the renters are all going to get bailed out. I'm telling you guys this in advance. I'm telling every room. I'm telling every live stream. Watch what happens. They're going to bail out all the renters. They're physically going to pay their debt past due amounts. That's what they're working on right now. That is the craziest thing I've ever heard. Why? My guess, being cynical, Blackstone, the largest property holder in the United States, probably has better lobbying these days than Wealth Chase and B of A. So the renters are getting more of a nod. And perceptually, no matter your politics being left or right, it's about keeping people elected so that they can collect checks, okay? And lobbying. This is a big cycle of life that we're all a part of. And it does affect your clients when you work distressed. So you have to stay up on it. You need to know the generalities of where it's all going. You can believe what you want to believe. You can believe in Santa Claus. I tried to keep that alive with my daughter for a very long time. I was happy to do it. I can tell you this, people who don't pay, don't pay. And there are a lot of companies that went out of business. So if you believe a million, if you believe three million, if you believe the biggest number, which I've heard, which is five million, depending on whose report on what day, I will give you a place to look and to point to for the future of what you should be watching. The mortgage industry. The only people talking about the moratorium ending on housing has been coming from one group. Admittedly, I run around like Paul Revere screaming, the sky is falling or the British are coming or anything roughly Punxsutawney Phil-like. The mortgage people have been talking about it for about three or four months straight and cranking out whatever they can on the topic. They're worried about FHA loans because they were severely delinquent a few years ago before the pandemic. So that money is insured by the federal government. That's bad. What's it all mean? Don't know. We're going to find out on July 1st. And the question is whether or not are you going to position yourself, whether or not you're going to believe this, whether or not you're going to involve or engage or work with these homeowners. It is a section of it all. I'm going to make you guys into advocates at this moment. These are my personal philosophies. I want to give you a designation that you can believe in. It is the biggest part of mindset that I can talk about. This is just a little breather before we go into marketing. Generally, on this tour so far, I've seen people who have a shell shock look, either based on the amount of speed to which I talk and crank out information, or at this point, they just simply can't believe what I told them. We had a woman yesterday who was sitting there with her jaw open when I said, yep, you made all your housing payments, didn't you? There are a bunch of people who didn't make their payments and it didn't go on their credit. I said it, know it, I've pulled credit, I've looked at it. It's a fact. For everybody who made a payment, renter or homeowner, they probably should be a little disgusted at this moment that these people are good. These people. These homeowners who were misled into believing that there was no impact, okay, 
they were misled into believing it, that there was no impact. Because the government will fix it, right? That's the number one thing I hear every single day. The government will fix it. How do you fix trillions of dollars? Has anybody watched that they can't get along right now? Somebody would have to write a check. And I'm pretty sure one of the sides is not going to agree. I'm not going to say which. But currently, it's really hard to write a check right now to fix things. So this is going to be an issue. Let's see it all play out. We are seven days away. Seven days away. Thank you. We'll get there. So here is my little pitch on being an advocate. When you watch a live stream, when you come to see one of our events live, my goal is to make you an advocate. Uh, it's important to be an advocate. Uh, and there are some rules behind it. First and foremost, thou shall be honest and truthful. Now, I'm going to say this politically correct because I am recording this, and there are people watching me. You may... You may or may not know somebody in real estate who does not adhere to this within our industry. I have done this for 30 plus years and I have run allegedly across people that are willing to do or say anything, especially in the distressed field, to get properties at or below fair market value because it is beneficial to them or their clients. And their clients are not the homeowner. They are an investor or somebody buying the property. It's a very cutthroat business. I have to deal with investors and they're worried about their net bottom line. And I understand it's about their families as well. They're just still a homeowner in that house making very bad decisions. As an advocate, you can never disclose enough. You can never be honest enough with them. They might not like the information. They might not like you for delivering the information, but as long as it's honest and truthful, you will be fine. And I stand by that. Second, Thou shall be, uh, thou shall not provide specialized service outside the field of their competence. Again, in my 30 plus years in banking and real estate, I have met quite a few people who have worked in the distressed field, who have not even gone to the trouble of seeing a couple of hours of somebody who's reputable, gone to a possible national association event, getting a, des getting a designation that would be beneficial to homeowners, to take the time to learn some specialized training. To even spend a couple hours here with us and go out and try to work in the field of distressed properties. And it's very harmful. It's what scares homeowners. They're afraid of you already before you get there. So uh, hopefully all of you agree to this, all on the live stream agree to this. Next, thou shall not deny equal professional service to any person. This is kind of a vanity one for me. I like saying this every day. Discriminating based on sex, creed, color, religion, or if you're married to a mailbox is vulgar, period. But I like to add this part. Discriminating against, this was in the email last night, her first line. I don't want to work on foreclosures because they're too hard. And you don't get paid. That's vulgar and disgusting as discriminating on anything else in my humble opinion. This is my only real big pitch for the room and those watching on the stream. 85% of what you do is for free. 15% will get you paid and paid well in distressed properties. I will see to it. It is my mission to help your families as well as the people that we're helping. But I know that when you're coming from a deep and genuine place of trying to help people, by the way, this is all self-discovery for myself as well. You get paid. You get paid well. I am very blessed and honored to be able to go out on the road and do this and still go play golf tonight. I'm helping people. Doesn't mean I stopped living life, that I'm living the life of a monk because of it. It's the same for you. It will be hard. They will treat you badly. I get it. It is the most extremely rewarding work that I've ever been a part of. That's true, but to get up the road, it's gonna be difficult. So don't, I, I, that email yesterday really, really bothered me. It really, really bothered me that somebody would say, they're not really worth the time. They're not worth the time. Human beings aren't worth the time because they didn't make a payment. It's their fault. That is so shallow and naive, I don't. When thou shalt provide uh, consultative services, to a client which involve advice or counsel for a fee 
and advice shall be rendered in an objective manner, and the fee shall not be contingent on the substance of the advice or the counsel given. Please see the previous answer, which is very simple. 85% of what you do is free. 15% will get you paid. We may or may not know people in real estate who would not want to be interested in distressed properties, much like the email I got yesterday, because they might not get paid. I'm going to have to invest a lot of time. I might have to invest effort. Everybody okay with doing this? The next time you talk to it, just be okay with it? Everybody okay? Everybody on the stream is okay with that? I, I want to give you guys a designation you can be proud of at this moment. Uh, this is actually the code of ethics from NAR. It breaks my heart every day. That's not a thing. Agents are about closing. When am I getting paid? Where's my next listing? Closing, 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 A, B, C. You're an advocate. What happened? What happened? I'm sorry to get emotional. It's very real. Real estate is messed up because we all got greedy. The reason pe people think badly about us, banks, escrow, title, investors, real estate agents, we got greedy. It was good money. It was. Banks are the same way. We should be about being advocates. I think you get more deals. I could be completely wrong, but based on my experience over the last 11 years of coaching students this way, I find it to be true. The thousand people that I currently have as coaching students see it as true. And if you're wondering if I've been this way for the last 11 years, no, this is all new to me too. I'm always amazed at which part of the, <laughs> Derek's probably making a note in the back of, today it was that slide. I think there's going to be a day where I do every single one of these slides and they're all gonna make me emotional on every single slide. But it's always random, every single day. That's the one that got me today. Go figure. All right, let's talk about step two. Everybody good with your mindset? Good. Let's move on. I want to put you in front of homeowners right now. This is the biggie. Yes, 11 years ago, I created Innovative Marketing. Got me named this, got me named that, put me on a boat with a goat. I ate the green eggs here. I ate them there. I ate them everywhere. Sorry. I haven't worked it into an event in a very long time. I love green eggs and ham. Sam, I am. All right. Your mission is to get in front of them. Whether or not you believe what you want to believe, I'm going to show you the easy, straightforward way to get in front of these people. Step number one, look for a trigger event. I'm going to give a general thing because I don't know who's on the live stream. I kind of opened it up on social media today in my circle, so I have anybody. There are three trigger events within real estate that actually matter. Probate, divorce, distressed properties. Why? It's public information that you can get your hands on legally, ethically, simply. There are websites dedicated to it. I focus on distressed markets for a bunch of reasons. If today's event and live stream was a probate event, we'd have a line around the block. There would be, they would crash my Zoom meeting. There would be 600 people on the Zoom meeting itself. Like it would be, wow, we got a real attorney teaching us about probate. If you've not worked probate, let me give you the quick highlights. Your first probate, generally speaking, will be your last probate deal that you work. And for all the jokes that people have made about short sales being long sales, wait until you do a probate. It makes short sales look short again. That's my probate joke for the day. The next is divorce. Uh, if you want to see personal drama and tragedy, as someone who has experienced it multiple times in my life, uh, I look at people and they go, oh, one sell, two buy. What a great opportunity. No, it's two people who do not agree, trying to agree on trying to sell. And you pick that agent. I didn't pick that agent. Why are we taking that price? Got it. Last public data source is distressed properties. Yes, I like it. And here's why. Real estate agents don't like it particularly. Believe it or not, most real estate agents are trapped in 2007. 
So when you say the word distressed property to most real estate agents, or is what I like to say, the uninitiated, they believe this. Oh, short sales. All right, look, I'm the largest short sale provider in North America right now. I don't have a lot of problems. I don't. They exist. They don't really exist. I mean, it's a percentage of a percentage. That's how many files I have. And I'm the biggest one doing it. My company is the biggest one. I feel bad for Gina. Okay, that's the truth. And it's mostly because they just got bunches and bunches of liens. Okay. Will the market depreciate? My plateau might depreciate, depends on the interest rate, depends how many properties come onto the market. It will be market to market. Real estate is local. Your market here is different than San Antonio's. Okay, somebody on this call could be in Naples, Florida, as compared to Orlando, Florida, right? I'm in San Diego. People are leaving in droves yet, right? So we see all these, there are pockets within our own county. That is a thing. That is not what I'm concerned about. None of that is what I'm concerned about. What I'm concerned about is, did you miss a payment? When did you miss a payment? How do I target that data? So I would love to give you some really good data advice right here because I want you to have actionable information. I provide leads for my client. In fact, I'm going to show you my marketing here in literally three minutes, step by step. As I said earlier, I've never done it. I've certainly never done it on a stream. So it'll be very exciting. I like showing off my marketing because <laughs> everybody looks at it and goes, it can't be that simple. Oh, but indeed it is. So the first thing you need is data. I do provide it for my clients and those that I coach. In your particular case, whether or not you choose to accept it, I'm going to tell you how to find it. There are three basic sources for pulling people who've missed payments. Not right now. Pandemic has to be over and they have to start reporting to credit again before you start this which I'll do your thought bubble. Lee, how are you getting leads for your client at this moment? It was hard. It was hard and it's taken me weeks and weeks to get it right. And I'm still in the process of getting it right. My students have been extremely forgiving as I got onto a learning curve of obtaining data in this market. There's no credit reporting. How are you finding the people that have missed payments? It, it's a really big question. I did, I figured it out. So when the pandemic's over in seven days, eight days, seven days, what would be July 1st? Wouldn't that make it eight days? This is going to be a debate. All right. It's midnight of the 30th day. Yeah, it would be eight days. You got to go one more. 1201, eight days. All right. A banker who can't do math can figure out time. Yes. And I was very good at it, too. <laughs> you saw the video. I'm quite fantastic at being that guy. Maybe not anymore. Probably be too emotional for me. All right. I like single family residential units, preferably owner occupied. Owner occupied. You want the owner of the property in the house. I'm not looking for investment properties. I've been told that those are easier conversions, but the legwork of tracking them down is not worth my effort. I want to say the owner in the house. Okay. I'm going to use property radar, realty track both available online and purchasable. Title or escrow, depending on your RESPA agreement within that state of how much information they can give you, because apparently we're no longer allowed to get donuts out of title companies anymore. Very disappointed when I started my own brokerage. Very disappointed. Find out I couldn't get donuts. Lastly, once you know that's the group you're targeting, right? You've filtered it to see if anybody's listed. You've gone to property radar, you've gone to realty track. You can also go to the county courthouse. Maybe you've got a title rec who's just kind of sneaking it out of the back door, depending on your state. Some states are still allowing it. You can get it on your MLS in some states, believe it or not. Very cool. Okay. Single family residence. Don't go for the high end. Don't go for the low end. Go right in the middle. For a long time, my students believe low end, they're going to be the quickest to convert. No, they're the ones who care the least and more than likely the ones that will pour cement down their toilets to teach the bank a lesson. That's my <laughs> historical perspective. And if you're asking me how many toilets is it at this point, I can safely assure you it's a lot of toilets. Uh, <laughs> I've been there. I've seen them painted. I've seen it all. Uh, it's a lot of toilets. I don't know what that is. Why are you so angry with the house? They're not the ones that took out the loan. I've always wondered that. High end, 
they're going to hire an attorney. They're the ones who are going to sue to keep their house. They're going to win. Good for them. People in the middle, people like me, people like you, we are really technically in the middle. We are not the uber elitists of the world who are going to hire attorneys to teach banks lessons. Uh, I hope you are doing enough business that you are not going paycheck to paycheck. I do hope that. That's a struggle. That's very real in America. I believe we're all in the middle somewhere, as am I. We are the ones who can be rationalized with. We can be told the truth. Those are your clients to target. Median price. I stress it. Median price houses are the higher converters. So now that we know who we're looking for, we know where to get the data. I'm going to end this little segment before I turn you into a closer, showing you my marketing technique. I'm going to answer this question before it mentally comes up here in a second. Lee, why would you really, really show me your marketing technique? It's won awards. It's got you on talk shows. It's done a lot for me. I'm very proud of it. I'm going to tell you, I'm still trying to help a million homeowners. If you get good ideas for marketing for me, then I've done my job here. Am I giving my marketing away? No, I'm not. I'm giving you the technique. And there's a very simple reason. I'll keep saying it. One million homeowners. I don't care if I get it through osmosis or by direct contact, by direct coaching, or Pony Express at the, this moment. My goal is one million homeowners. I am on a redemption tour of some kind. I woke up one day over the last year and realized how many bad things I've done to homeowners. This is it. That's how I got those people to work with me. Nobody has wanted to work with me in the past. Can't imagine why I'm such a nice guy. He said as he rolled in his eyes as himself. I need you to stand out in the crowd. This is again a little bit of a vanity moment. I do not prospect. It's just a word of warning for what you're about to see. I'm not prospecting here. I do not believe that at all. Door knocking, cold callers, and mailers have been a failure for quite some time. And when you work with distress, it's even worse. Which takes us to work smarter, not harder. I recently watched a video online. And on that video, it blamed the real estate agents for their lack of listings. And within that video, it said, and I quote, you need to commit to 40 to 50 hours of hard work per week. It still makes me smile a little bit. And here's why. Uh, I don't do that. I wouldn't even ask my students to do that. And I realized that if you really did put in 40 to 50 hours of work per week, you'd have a lot of listings. I mean, seriously, you really would. It's beneficial on that level. Truth be told, when I had a real estate license, which I let expire in the 90s, I never wanted to work 40 to 50 hours a week. When I was a bank guy becoming a real estate agent, it was because of the freedom and the luxury of spending time with my daughter and my family. And to be honest, getting my mani petty at two o'clock in the afternoon when there was no line. I mean, that's the truth of being a real estate agent. And that's why we all love it. I don't know why everybody shies away from it. Work smarter, not harder. Don't believe the hype. You know why you have to put in 40 to 50 hours of marketing? And it's taken me 11 years to learn this lesson and I'm gonna pass it along. That's because spam marketing techniques do not work. You can knock all the doors you want until your head explodes, okay? The percentage of success on door knocking and cold calling, which are labor intensive, is so dramatically low, it hurts my head. So we're gonna change that right now. I'm going to teach you my process. This is what the empowered do, the others do not. I have 1,000 coaching students using this across the country. I'm happy to teach it to you. They probably wouldn't be happy. They've invested literally, because I know this, thanks to my accountant recently, who was taking care of my taxes. They've invested millions of dollars into this technique that I'm about to teach you. So don't devalue it and think that this is a nothing moment. All right, step one. Start your month. By getting your leads. I provide it for my clients. For you, start always on a fresh month. Start on a fresh day. Whatever that day is, if it's the first, which would be D-Day for all of us, July 1st, that's the day you want to pull your data. 
But Lee, you just told us there was no data to get. Check again on July 1st. Could be different. I'm just saying that out loud. I am pulling data and leads from my client currently. There are ways around it. My biggest tip is, why don't you look before the moratorium? I don't think any of those people who missed payments before have been caught up. And I don't even think that they know that they're actively in foreclosure still. I think they believe that they are a part of the moratorium system, which is what we focused on. Vegas has real-time data. Uh, Florida has real-time data. There are some states. I didn't say this at the beginning. I will say it now. I believe Texas is next. I do. You seem to mirror a lot of what Florida does. It, uh, I would guess you guys are next. I think I'm the first you guys go. I think credit goes. I think foreclosures start again here in Texas. Won't be with the big three. They're going to wait till the very last minute. But all the other lenders, the quickens of the world, the servicers of the world, they will start again on July 1st. And I believe it'll be here. So you will see an uptick in it. Everybody able to get their leads? We're starting our month off strong. Step two, what are your Avery labels? Why would I need labels? We're going to print out a marketing piece. These are Avery labels. These are Avery labels. Avery 6464s, okay? Repealable labels. I'm going to teach you how to put a marketing piece up that will get you a result, okay? These are the marketing pieces. These are the Avery labels. When you type it in, I believe we're all experts at Amazon at this moment. I know I am. And by now still scares me as compared to putting it in my cart. I'm just saying that out loud. It does. It's all so quick. It's over. And then it's there in a few hours. It's amazing. They're repealable. If they're not, make sure to get a little lid. We're going to put this on the distressed homeowner's house here in a moment. I'm going to show you what the marketing piece is in just a second. So we ordered them. They show up from Amazon. There's an Amazon brand, uh, twice as many, half as much. Works pretty well, too. These are the same brand. You're going to set up a Google Voice number. I'm going to teach you a little quick marketing thing. This is why I'm an expert in marketing. Put out a marketing piece, generates a phone call. If you send a postcard, you're looking for a phone call. Put out a marketing piece, you get a phone call. Right? We all agree? You're going to get a phone call from this marketing piece. It needs to go somewhere. What I've discovered over 11 years of working with this particular marketing method, I would prefer you don't take that call at the moment. Your tendency is going to be to qualify them. Anybody know what qualify means? Are you a listing today? The only refunds I've handed out over the last 11 years, the only negative comments I have online, when you boil them down, Lee, you didn't get me listings. I have lots of appointments, but you didn't get me listings. They're not ready to sell. I'll make this clear at this moment. I do not get people listings. I get you opportunities to speak with homeowners where they believe that they just ordered you just like being on Amazon to hear about their alternatives to foreclosure. That is what I do. I openly disclose it. I am a state approved educator, five different states. Disclose, 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 okay? I'm not here for listings. I'm here to educate homeowners. What they do after that is their choice. I can explain all the percentages to you and I'm going to and why you will get listings. Your goal is to engage them while you are energized and they will bring it back to you, I promise. Why brought you a closer? I got this, I got this. Just follow the process. Put the little device up, set up a Google number. Easy enough. It's gonna say, hey, hi, sorry. Can't take your call right now. Please leave your tracking number and your last name and we'll call you back. Here's a message. Yes, I am really giving away my technique. I'm gonna customize the labels with your call center number right here in the orange section. You put your, that's the number they're gonna call it back for for their delivery. Everybody good? Am I going too fast? It's all gonna to tie together here in a quick second. You're looking at me going, he's really doing this. Oh yes. For those, my coaching students are on this call today. I'm really doing this. I'm going to help a million homeowners. Whether anybody likes it or not, it is my goal. Step five, prepare the packages. These little bad boys. I've heard them called labels, 
I've heard them called tags. What is Richard's term? The notices. Notices. I've heard them called notices now. Uh, okay, they're marketing pieces. We can call them widgets. I don't really particularly care. It's a delivery label. I am delivering you to the homeowner. I believe in permission-based marketing. I do not believe in spam. I do not believe in cold calling. I do not. I believe in delivering you with an, to them with an education. Okay? That's all we're going to go do. We're going to go meet them, educate them. The rest of this is Derek's problem. I'm no longer in the game. I realize that I have expected too much as an expert in stress properties that you're going to show up and do what I would do which I guess is get a payment from the homeowner. So let's try to engage them and educate them. And that's why Derek will be here literally in just a couple of slides. All right, once I have that, I'm gonna go put out the labels. Map them out. We recommend to our students, again, here we're back to the 40, 50 hours of work. I'm gonna tie it together. I do not believe in working 40 to 50 hours. This was a question asked of me yesterday by our newest student who's going to be on the call today. How many hours should I dedicate to this every week? I said, have you got an extra three to five hours in your week to dedicate? He said, yeah, eh, that's about it. He really looked at me and he went, really? I said, well, to deliver 12 labels, to put them physically on the house, I'm gonna put it on either the front door, the garage door, or the outside of the mailbox legal, check it with the US Postal Service, and put it on the outside of the mailbox. Again, they're repealable. Don't use permanent ones. You're going to piss off homeowners. You will get a different kind of call. Happen. One of those three locations. Put out 12 in an area. Hour? Two? Max? If you put out 12 marketing pieces, I'll ask all of you. I'll ask the people on this call. If you put out 12 marketing pieces, if you got one appointment, you're going to be okay with it? which by the way, would still make it the most successful marketing ever in the history of marketing. Why it's been around for 11 years, why I can guarantee face-to-face. -face. And as you look at this, you can see why I'm guaranteeing face-to-face, -face. but I'm gonna explain why it all really, really works. And it's simply this. We actually get about a 20 to 40% response rate. That means they call. They don't really leave messages, but since they call, I pick up their number from Google Voice. That's all I need. Call them back. I'm going to tell you what you're supposed to read. This is an abbreviated version of the script that my clients have. Disclose. I work with a homeowner advocacy that would like to come over and talk to you about your loan mod, your forbearance agreement, and alternatives to foreclosure. And I set up that appointment. Now, if you're wondering, that would never work. You would be 100% wrong. It has worked successfully year after year, even when short sales weren't around in 2010 anymore. This has been extremely successful. It's provided for me and my family. It's provided for a thousand real estate agents. It really has helped thousands and thousands of homeowners. Why? We are not there to close them. We're there to educate them. Now I'm gonna tell you what happens. Pretty straightforward. Uh, you're gonna get the call. You're gonna set up the appointment just as I laid out for you. And you're gonna go meet the homeowners. And you're gonna do what Derek tells you to do in the next series of slides. You are, pretty easy. They're gonna then tell you anything probably then sell. You will find people who wanna sell immediately. We're looking at the current public data and it's really promising. People are being very hip and selling their house because they're at the top of the market and taking equity out and downsizing and moving to places that they can actually afford. That's very promising with the early market data on distressed properties. Generally speaking, they stay in the house till the last minute. They will call you 24 hours before their sale date across the US. And they will say to you on hour 23 of 24 of my house sale, okay, I'm ready to sell my house, what do I do? How do I stop the foreclosure? Sale date, they will. You at that moment will look at them and you will say, okay, I need to sell your house, whatever it is, right? And uh, when that happens, you're gonna say, oh my gosh, I need a buyer. 
I'm saying this on camera, I'm saying it to all of you. Lee Hanish will buy that house at fair market value or below fair market value. If you bring an offer with my name on it for my signature, that's $100,000 over fair market value, I am going to laugh at you and I am gonna throw you out of my program, okay? I am prepared and I'm saying it on camera while I'm videotaping, I will purchase distressed homeowners homes at or below fair market value. Not with the intent of tricking the bank into stopping the foreclosure because this video might be played at evidence with some attorney at some point. I will physically buy it. I will. No, I'm not gonna rent it back to them. I'm gonna make that clear. People who don't pay, don't pay. My dad taught me that, okay? Taught me that in 1988. I have never lost that touch. You, I will throw them out. I will evict them because it will then be my income property and I will not be happy about them still in that house. So don't look for a deal on this. This isn't, yay, he's really gone full advocate. No, I started in this field. I will boot them out. I will sell it to an investor. I will fix it up. I will make it abundantly clear what I do with that property. Okay, as a disclosure on video that I am recording. Doesn't make me a bad guy. I want them to get fair market value, okay? That's the truth. I get worried when I do this bit every day on camera because I basically said to a thousand real estate agents who are my clients, go write offers for me, I'm buying today. Whoo, that's a very scary thing, especially on a live stream that's being recorded with lots of very important people probably on this call. I'm prepared to do it. I'm prepared to do it. I also have investors behind me. They're prepared to do it, okay? So my corporation is prepared. We don't want them to go to sale. So that's how it's gonna play out. You'll be okay. In the worst case scenario, you call our company, whether or not you work with us, everybody on the live stream, whether or not you work with us, call us, right? Guess what Home Advocate's mission statement is? 85% of what we do is for free, 15% pay us. So I'll say this, call us. We will give you good advice. We'll do a three-way call. If you need a banker to talk to your client, call me. I'm able to do it still. Uh, it's like ventriloquism. I can drop right back into that person, no matter how much therapy I've got. It's kind of simple, actually. Last but not least, you're going to update your file. Truth be told, they're going to do what they're going to do, and they're going to take as long as they want to take to get to where they're doing it, right? Okay, there's a reason why I'm telling you that. <laughs> you got to follow up with them. Uh, I will teach you some marketing math. 10 to 15 touches before a client actually takes an action is generally the mathematics of marketing. The more you follow up with them, the more likely they are to be branded with you at top of mind, blah, 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 words, words, words. I do the follow up for my clients. Here's why. The previous to about a year ago, my, my own coaching students didn't follow up enough for my choice. So if you're asking me, Lee, what do I physically have to do if I work with you? Go put out the tag. I'm talking as simple as I can. And somebody's going to be mad at me for saying like, put up the tag, wait for the phone call, call them back, go on the appointment, do what Derek says, tell me that you met with them. You're thinking that I'm being condescending at this moment. I'm not. It's 11 years with this marketing piece. I'm tired. I'm just tired. Update me on who you talk to. I'll do your follow-up. I will brand you. You will be listed on my website anyway as an advocate. So it's easy for me to put them into my follow-up sequences. As many of you are aware here, I have no shame in my email or voice broadcast game. Same is true for a homeowner. I'm going to follow up with them whether they like it or not because they're going to try loan mod. They're going to try a forbearance agreement. They might need assistance with that. We will help them. We have alternatives for that, okay? Those are the two biggest things. Home Advocates is prepared for that and to assist them with that. They might wanna do a BK. Ooh, exciting. Need a referral for that. Ultimately, when they wanna sell the house, which they all do, I'm gonna tell you a complete certainty in distressed properties. Nine out of 10 people you talk to who have at least a notice of default or a less pendants people. I feel like I should address them every once in a while. They're peeping toms. Nine out of 10 people that you meet when you start to talk about forbearance agreements, loan mods, notice of default, notice of sale. Would you like to know what happens in 90% of all those cases? Title is transferred. 
either by them or the bank, that property is going to change hands nine out of 10 times. For every 10 people you talk to, nine of them, after the word notice of default, all right, Chicago, list pendants for you guys. Got to cover it. I keep forgetting it's a national stream sometimes. 90% of the time, it's going to transfer. So here's the question that I always have. Why do people let their house go to foreclosure? I've wondered this for 30 plus years. It is not more beneficial to let the bank foreclose on your property. In no case whatsoever. Oh, I'll get a check from the bank. No, you actually have to request it. And they might even collect interest if they can get away with it, depending on the entity. Like banks don't give up money easily. Like you're going to have to make a phone call and fight for it, even if it goes to sale. And they're going to take fees. It is so much better for homeowners. And if you're a homeowner on this call, it's better to sell. I forgot to address them. This was on social media. You might have a homeowner on here. By the way, we have plenty of people on this call that will help you. Let's not talk about the kids in the room. You're going to sell the house. You'll be fine. It's not that difficult. You guys can handle that part. I'm out of the game at that point. We do have buyer programs. I'm prepared to buy. We have an investor program for distressed properties. Make it as simple and clean as possible for you. We have all the resources. They're very tired. Everybody good at this point. You are an hour and 15 minutes, hour and 10 minutes into this. Everybody okay? Because now the really hard part, and I say it's hard. For you guys, it's probably simple. But this is the hard part for me and why I got a Derek in my life. It's like a Christmas present under a tree. I need to show you how to connect with homeowners. It's that important. <coughs> part of the day, I get to turn this over to my friend, Derek, Derek Kelly, and I get to do his introduction. Let me tell you about Derek. He's a career coach. That's a real thing. He's been doing it for over 20 plus years. Credit, accredited, wow, that's the weird one that got my tongue tied today. Accredited, name, top, blah, blah, blah. Everybody says that stuff. More importantly, he is a natural closer. He is actually the very best I've actually seen on the topic. I've seen him work with people with special needs uh, in sports, all the way to working for Fortune 500 companies, closing products that he wasn't even supposed to sell for them. He just did it on the side, remarkably. Um, I'm really bad with human beings. I'm really bad. The most uncomfortable part of this tour is being on tour with Derek, who actually engages everybody we encounter. I, I'm working on my people skills. Uh, Derek has already given up trying to help me with my people skills because I am reluctant. He's just told me a few cool things to say so that I don't look crazy when we meet people in public. And that's a plus. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm going to be his hardest client. Uh, he does not speak real estate at all. If you have any real estate or banking questions, save them for me. I didn't hire him for real estate skills. All right. There's only room on my boat for one expert. However, there's plenty of room on my boat for a guy who can close and teach you how to engage. It is my weakest point. And last but not least, it's about creating trust. There are three things. I've learned this over 11 years of teaching marketing and consulting at the highest levels. The top of this field, there are three things that will close a transaction. Like, trust, expertise. I can tell you expertise is the lowest one on the list because that's my category and that is not what closes. It's like and trust. And in Derek's case, it's natural. I, we've all heard it. He can sell ice to Eskimos. Okay. Until you actually meet a natural closer, you don't understand how true that statement is. It's not about romancing them and telling them words and neurolinguistically programming. It's about connecting and engaging. He's getting a big build up today. So he better not drop the ball. I'm doing it on purpose every day. It's ramping higher and higher. Pretty soon you're going to hear about the time he tried to jump the snake canyon on a motorcycle. 
the joke that you would like. <laughs> it gives me great pleasure and honor to turn over the event for the next uh, 20 minutes or so, 20, 30 minutes to Derek, because I really want you guys to connect and engage. At this point, you know how to market. You know what you're dealing with, I hope. Now, what do you do? All right, I turn it over to Derek Kelly. Thank you, Lee. Good morning, everyone. Nice to be here. My name is Derek Kelly. Thanks, for, thanks Lee, to all the accolades. Again, uh, the praise is nice, and, and I'm very, very happy to be here in Texas. We've been on the road for a couple couple of weeks now, and we just uh, love Texas. Again, my accent is from Boston. I don't speak Texan, but it's great to be in Dallas. Uh, I was, fun fact, and I'll just start with a kind of a light uh, two top two uh, accents in the country. Number one is Texan. Number two is from Boston. So I'm just grateful to be here. Home advocates, they asked me for my assistance. I jumped on board. I'm very, very pleased to be a part of this company. I believe in the, the mission. I believe in what we're doing for homeowners. I've always been of service in every field. Been in sales for 20 years. I worked for a media company. I've been in some great management, international management company that I was in. I love doing this work. I love engaging people. My slide is probably going to be about 15, 20 minutes. I'm going to get right into it. Lead talk mindset, mission. How do we move it? Once we get in front of these homeowners, how do we engage them? First thing, energize. How do we do that? What does energize mean in sales? As an agent, dealing in this specific genre of real estate, distressed properties. These people are dead in the water. They need a jump start. We have to learn how to engage them. And I do it, I have a, Lee and I, when we first wrote out the program and he asked me my thoughts on how to engage and how to connect, and he called me a closer. And I don't really like that label. Yes, I'm good in sales. Yes, I'm good when I get in front of people. Yes, I'm good, good at connecting and talking and communicating. I like, it's not always be closed and it's not ABC anymore for me. It's always be connecting, always be communicating. So I got a couple of things. I got some tips. You might want to write a few of these down. This is basically, I'm going to share two personal experiences, one in my personal, one in my professional life. And I'm trying going to try to explain the method that I use when I'm dealing with people in my everyday life. The first is three and three. What does that mean? When I meet somebody, whether it's an agent, uh, a client, somebody new just happens <clears throat> to cross my path, I ask them three questions, three personal questions. I ask them three questions about themselves and I tell three things about me. That right away relaxes people. The three and three, I call it. And to give you an example, get my hair cut before the tour in my regular barber shop, nice, nice salon. I'm usually alone in there with, with my hairstylist. There happen to be two ladies in there getting their, their hair done, color work. And right away, I, I engage them. I, I say hello. I ask a few questions. I do what I normally do, normally on a daily basis. These ladies, you know, ask them where they're from, what they do. Simple questions, personal. You know, how, how, how are you doing? We get in a nice conversation. We're all having fun. <laughs> And again, ladies in the salon, they, they talk it up. I'm in there, I'm, I'm, I'm having a party with these ladies, having some fun. And you know, the owner comes in and he says, these ladies never talk to anybody. And here you are chatting them up. They're not very friendly, they're hard to reach. How did you do it? And I said, I just asked a couple simple questions, three and three. We start talking real estate, I'm listening, I'm observing, and then I'm teaching. L-O-T, three things that I used in this just simple encounter they asked me what I did. I told them I'm in real estate. I deal as a home advocate in distressed properties. They had some forbearance questions. I couldn't answer them because I'm not an expert. But again, she asked for information. I was able to refer them out to my company. We have experts that deal with these things. Again, just not even trying to sell, I can sell. And again, how that works exactly, it works just by being honest, authentic, have an integrity and love. Hail. Uh, about three months ago, a client, so that's a personal thing. 
going out just my everyday thing. Professionally, a client asked me, her father died. And she asked me, could I watch her house for 20 days while she goes to Maryland? She had a golden retriever, needed her house managed for, for about three weeks. I did not hesitate. I said, yes, automatically. Why? Because that's what I do. I'm of service to the clients that I have. My clients, my friends, I try to give. I try to be of service. Advocacy, we talked a lot about it, why it's important as an agent in this business. Real simple, I'm coming to somebody's aid. That's, that's what it means in the Latin. Advocate is a call to aid. So when Melinda called me and let me know that she's gonna have to go out of town, can I watch the house for 20 days? I said, yes. Not, even, not thinking about, oh, is she gonna pay me or anything, okay? I did a good job, walked the dog. It had um, a medical issue, had to be given some medication. So I just had to crush up a pill, put it in some peanut butter. I watched, I, I lived in a mansion for 20 days. It was nice, I worked out of her house, had a few, she's like, please have people over, you know, have a cookout, invite people over, beautiful house in San Diego. Okay, she's getting ready to return, I clean the whole house. Clean it to a T, I was dusting, and I'm not the best housekeeper, but again, I cleaned her house, made it special for, for her return, because I knew she's dealing with estate issues back on the East Coast of Maryland, Okay. And I know she's going through some, some tough times, 40 acres to be, you know, chopped up with all her siblings. Again, it was, it was a big deal. And again, she was grateful that I did it. I also cooked a meal for her, her husband and the three boys. When they returned off the airplane, they had a meal ready for them after the long flight from the East coast. That created a wow moment for her. She wasn't expecting it, but as an agent, this is what you want to do. I do it little, little things, sending thank you cards. Remembering somebody's birthday, remembering a son's birthday, attending a, a client's son's soccer game, doing little things, okay? And again, all these things create trust. Trust accelerates credibility. And Lee talked about it. Three ways you can really be successful. In as a closer, as a sales agent, whatever you're doing, selling homes, commercial real estate, all it doesn't really matter if you use these three these things in your life as a as a as an agent you'll have success you'll be able to connect easy with people energize educate and engage i'm going to show you some engagement tip, uh, tips at the end of my slides how to what to say when you're in front of these homeowners but first how do we educate them how do we give them the alternatives i'm not an expert but again, as an agent, you don't have to be great at something to start, but you have to start at something to be great. Even as an agent here, you all probably have more expertise in real estate. But again, how are you with the clients? How are you with, with the relating to them? You educate them once you energize. We have nine alternatives. I'm gonna go through these very, very briefly and quickly, because again, a lot of them are outside my forte. One, we all know this one. I'm easy. I, I've done nothing. You know, if you do nothing, nothing happens. Okay. Some of these homeowners are, are in fear. We agree it's a tough time with everything that's happening. Real estate will change, market up, market down, market hot, doesn't really matter. There are homeowners in distress facing foreclosures that will do nothing. Again, there are nine of them. That's one that they will pick. It's not an option for me. My next three slides, all are banking, payoff, refinance, bring it up to date, whatever. I mean, Lee talks real estate and, and banking. It's like Charlie Brown for me, you know, the adults. Wah, 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 wah. I don't understand it. I don't need to. Neither do you. Everyone here, I'm sure, has their area of expertise as an agent. Again, clients, you find out what they need. This is option two. Option three is to reinstate. Again, banking issue. We have experts that will give them the counsel on that. Partial claim, option four. All of these are tied in. D in lieu of foreclosure. Looks like he's handing over the keys to me. A deed in lieu instead of foreclosure. Deed in lieu means what? My understanding is, is it still a foreclosure? A 
deed in lieu of foreclosure is a foreclosure, still goes on their credit as a foreclosure. Some will offer it, it's not the best alternative, but again, we're presenting and educating them what they can do so they can have a dignified decision, a dignified solution. Again, Lee mentioned bankruptcy. I, I don't know banking, I, I don't know the legal. I'm not an attorney, any attorneys in the room? Can I offer this homeowner legal advice? No, I'm not an attorney. It's against the law. So we refer them again to somebody that can deal with their bankruptcy. As home advocates, we're coming to their aid. We can offer this. Loan modification, same thing we went down. They, they're probably gonna offer this, okay? And we can assist them, as well as their forbearance agreement. These two go hand in hand. Most home owners will opt for this. And lastly, I know everyone's an expert at selling a house. List it, show it. Everyone here know how to sell a house? Of course. So again, these are the, what we bring to the homeowner is their alternative. Some of them don't know. Again, some of you may not know that these were the nine alternatives to foreclosure. If you're not in distressed property, which I'm not, I'm not an expert, but again, I can at least educate them on it and refer them out to the experts. The banking questions can be answered. Whether it's bankruptcy, forbearance, loan mod, we can, we can handle anything that comes. And again, we're there to engage them, to help them. They're terrified. Lee mentioned the article. I read the same article, the woman. She's been working. She's terrified. These people are terrified. It's doomsday for them, losing a home. I can't even imagine. We are there to offer some relief, the solution. You know, not bringing more problems and complications into it. We're trying to keep it simple. This is an easy learning curve. If you haven't worked in distressed properties, you can be taught. You can come up to speed. Again, think about their needs and engage them. I'm gonna give you the script. I don't like scripts because again, I don't believe in them. I believe with being honest, authentic, having integrity and showing them love. We all have the same needs, the same fears. Everybody's the same, okay? Need for security. Everyone has it. Need for love, need for respect, need for justice to be treated fairly. How do I engage them? I'm at the door. I already have an appointment, permission based. They've called me. I'm coming to give them some information, educate them. I have their NOD. Are you aware you're, you're actively in foreclosure? Here's your copy of your NOD or notice of sale. Again, these are again outside. Okay. These are the nine alternatives. Hand them over. Read and hand it over. Explain it. Educate them on it. Now again, you're there. You have permission to be there. You can educate them. And again, Lee and I have been going through, I went through the archives, and again, I've tried to study on this, but again, I, there's so much information. It's just, I, should I study to become a real estate agent? No. Should I study about distressed properties? No, my job in the company is to help you engage and close. Even though I don't like the word, help you connect with these people because they need us, they need you. They need the agents to assist them, advocate, teach them. A great engagement line, one of the best ones I've seen in our archives, we have well over 5,000 uh, hours of videos for the last 11 years, both Lee and his former partner have countless, we have an archive of documents and videos. And I went through it looking for the best closing engagement lines for our students. And this is the one I found. It was from Nino Sobroso. Use this line, write it down. You get there, you hand over, give them the alternatives, and then you say simply, what did the bank do to you? That's it. From there, you get invited in, you'll hear the story. What did the bank do to you. That is it. Again, pay attention, listen to them, observe, then teach. L-O-T, three and three. Again, just to go over it. Try it in your everyday life, see if it works. Ask somebody three questions about themselves, tell three things about yourself. Again, it's a nice way to be. I'm interested in people, I love people, I love connecting. Everywhere I go, I talk to people. 
It's very easy for me to do it. Not everyone's comfortable in that situation, but again, to be great at something, you have to start somewhere, okay? And it can be simple. We take the learning curve out of this, okay? We, we've made the mistakes. Our agents have given us great feedback, and I ask feedback from even my clients. What can I do better? You know, how, how, do, how do you want me to teach it? How do you want, how do you want it to explain to you? Again, think about their needs before your own. I don't look at my clients as ATM machines. They're not. I'm not hitting a four-digit code and withdrawing money. No, these are people that I respect and I love. I love a lot of my clients. That family invited me for Thanksgiving dinner, the one that I, I watched their house and dog for 20 days. I'm from Boston, living in San Diego. I have no family in San Diego. They invited me over twice, two Thanksgivings in a row. I, I had Thanksgiving at their house. Beautiful. They have a, a great pie flip, flipping contest, and I was a part of that. You know, so it's a, it's just it's an honor to be in people's lives, my clients especially. I want to be there so I can help them. That's what I do. Mentors have mentors. Uh, I like to introduce mine at this moment. These are the three books that have fundamentally changed my life. I get constantly asked, what should I read? What should I do that will be beneficial to me? Uh, the first is uh, all three. People I would like to call mentor and friends. No doubt. Don Miguel Ruiz, The Four Agreements. If you're going to work distressed properties, I almost think that this is recommended reading when you leave here today. Just buy the audio book. It'll take a couple of hours and worth every minute. Seth Godin's Permission-Based Marketing. Possibly the most brilliant mind in marketing ever. He deserves every second of it. Just read the first half of the book. Second half is not worthwhile, in my humble opinion. And the third, Rhonda Byrne. I would love to stand up here and tell you that I am a man of science. But up until recently, I'm not even sure that I had a concept of God, the universe, and everything. Until that book. Now... I am a positive, motivated person who manifests just about anything I want because I believe it will happen. I tell a story at this point every day in my presentation. The story brings me the greatest joy I can possibly do for real estate agents. It's about my friend who owned a mattress store. I say in the past tense, owned. He asked me for marketing assistance at the height of everything that was great for me. I had just gotten awards. I was now that guy in marketing. Lee, I need you to expand my business. I came over on a Sunday and I sat there in his store as a client walked in. He started to look at mattresses. It was Sunday afternoon. Looked at a couple of mattresses. He yelled from across the store. Call me if you need anything. Just give out a yell. They looked at a couple of mattresses and then turned around and walked out. I asked a simple question. What was your mindset? They said, this is what my friend said. I didn't think he was going to buy anything. And I said, congratulations, you nailed it. That's exactly what happened. I've only had one person fail with my marketing. It is a very dear friend who I love deeply. Almost to the point of recklessness on my part. I really do love her that much. And all her applause. There's only been one person to not make my marketing work. It is that person, which strangely breaks my heart and makes me smile all at the same time because you can't break a mindset. I physically heard her say, your marketing doesn't work. I have been doing my marketing for 11 years. I coach 1000 students. If that were the case, based on the prices that I charge for consulting and marketing, there'd be a lot of complaints about me at this moment. I would not be able to tour at all. I would have empty, empty rooms, okay? It would, it would be me alone on webinars. It would, I would be alone. The only people who ask for refunds in my life, this is a true story, are the people who expect listings out of me. I create opportunity, I create more. Over the last two years because of the pandemic, I had the opportunity to work with gardeners, pizza shops, and other, I expanded my marketing footprint because it made me excited. Real estate agents pretty much stopped. The top of the top kept going. 
everybody else just sort of hunkered down. So I just started doing marketing and I've learned a lot about people and I've learned about more about the psychology. It is about the message you deliver. Just saying you're a real estate agent isn't enough to be successful. That's the truth. Specialists make more. I use, this will be my last example on the topic. It's truly the secret and Seth Godin and the four agreements all combined. I was trying to help a pizza shop. They said, we make the best pizza, period. I said, well, one, you wouldn't need my help. Two, what's your proof of it? What can you document? What customer can you show me? Who's standing behind you? Is there a national pizza organization that has pointed out a contest that you won at? Just saying it doesn't make it true. The same is true of being on an advocate and doing this marketing. You do have to put boots on the ground. You do have to meet with the homeowner and you have to walk and talk, going back to all of this and my friend, Tony Robbins, congruently. I can't do this presentation unless this is how I truly passionately feel. It would sound like lip service. With the amount of emotional stuff that I've now packed in here about my own life and sharing it with a room on a daily basis, I don't know which of these slides will ever catch me. The one that normally does is the next thing I'm about to do. I'm gonna spend five minutes attempting to recruit you in my system. I've been up here just about two hours, just about. We're kind of done with the action packed part. At this point, you've made your mind up one way or the other, what you wanna believe. And I say this for the live stream people. You kind of made up your mind about what you're gonna believe about the market. You've already created numbers in your head. Maybe I was neuro-linguistically programming you at this moment. In a second, I will produce a card that I was planting in your head at this moment. You'll think it's the greatest moment in the entire show. You're gonna believe what you wanna believe. I used to think that I could change everybody's mind by just keep showing them proof. Just keep doing it. Willpower wins. Truth be told, for as much as I know about psychology and studied psychology, I'm not a mind reader, neither are you. You're always gonna be surprised by your clients. You're gonna be surprised by their actions. I'm gonna be surprised by these rooms every single day. Doesn't matter if I have hundreds of hundreds of people or just a few, I'm always surprised. And the people who showed up have all been wonderful because distressed property is the redheaded stepchild of real estate, it just is. We are the forgotten cousin on the other side of the family. Cool, better for you easier branding, more opportunity. It is harder work. This is like my last five or 10 minutes on the day before I turn this all off. And Derek and I have an opportunity to talk to you. With your permission, I like saying that. With your permission, I would love to introduce my family, my it, my why, and my marketing system that I created 11 years ago. It helped relieve stress in my life it helped relieve the stress in countless agents that I've spoken to. It is a part of a thousand agents daily routines. If it's okay, can I show it to you real quickly? And then I'll answer all your questions. Good, yeah. It's my daughter, McKinsey. Yeah, every day. I have to turn my back on it. <laughs> I'm making eye contact on purpose. I hope when your pictures of your family come up, it does the same thing to you. Does to me every day. Uh, August 6, 2004, We're coming up on a birthday. She will be 17. She just got her driver's license. She'll be off to college next year. She is my it and she is my why. The people you help have an it and a why and a roof. It is why I cry so hard every day. 2010, I created Monster Marketing. It was the very first thing I ever created when I became a quote unquote solo act. I actually spoke for a company called Short Sale Genius for three years, right after leaving IndyMac Bank. 2010, I created Monster Marketing. Got me featured on everything, gave me a following, turned me into a quote unquote a named marketer in America, blah, blah, blah. Words, words, words. Question is, does it work? Back it up, do you have results? Google me. I will tell you all four complaints 
about me. <laughs> you didn't refund my money quick enough because I didn't get listings. Here's why. Generally, people who are unhappy with me just get their money back on their credit card, then harass me for cash because PayPal took too long and get double back from me. Yay them. Good job. You got it. I just wish they'd send me the video so I could use them as testimonials. The first one who did it actually said to me, I had like 15 appointments this month. None of them turned into listings. If you shoot me a videotape, I'll pay back double. That's what I told them. Never got the video. Still refunded them. Monster marketing came out of my own personal desperation. It, it is that simple. I kind of had an idea for the concept after reading Seth Godin's book on a trip to Salt Lake City, and then I perfected it literally over a decade. And I wrote a book, and I created a system. I have really coached a 1,000 people. They're on this call right now. They are tired of me pounding them over the head of keep it simple. I got them a Derek. I mean, it was like a Christmas laundry list of the stuff that I got them. It works really well. We have an online academy for my students. When you enroll or enlist or whatever words you want to use, invest into me. Uh, our coaching system is all on Kajabi. It breaks down into three different bunnels. There is an education process for that 10 step process I showed you. I explain it even more. And if it sounds like I'm over explaining 10 very simple steps, yes, yes I am with video. In fact, I have uh, laid it all out with video. I've gone to the trouble of laying it out almost systematically. I'm not even sure how I was able to fill a whole module with those 10 steps. So I just took my time and shot videos on how to do Excel spreadsheets. I basically figured out I have to teach Excel as well. Uh, how to set up a Google Voice. My explanation was too complicated, believe it or not. So I had to steal somebody's video. I will say that on camera. I stole somebody else's how to set up a Google Voice number video as the video to teach you how to set up a Google Voice because mine was too technical. Uh, maybe it was too simple. The marketing piece that you saw earlier is a template. There are three different designs. There are actually multiple versions of it. The one that I showed you here today is actually the most popular and has worked consistently, still does. Uh, up until recently, we had just way too many testimonials in the event. I'm not really looking for signups, believe it or not. I'm looking to educate people, period. If you leave here and you can go get an NOD list and you can take my information and build a system that I've already built, let me give you some help. Good. You're not going to hurt my feelings telling you that. But I also know this for people watching and for some of you here. There are people, well, I know this. Everyone knows how to wash their car. Nobody does it. I, I've actually built this already. I've been doing it for 11 years. I've actually worked out the teams, how to map it, how to go to the house. Yes, I know it's going to feel a little weird going and putting a tag on a house and looking for a result. I should be knocking, I should be some, leaving something at the door, like a basket of cookies or something. No, you shouldn't. You should let them decide whether or not they wanna to talk to you. Tell them why you're coming over before you show up. I wish people would do this more in real estate. Disclosure isn't your enemy. We coach now, almost to the point of um, insanity. Like it's too much coach. I actually believe this is a better program. It's not an oversell. You get a one-on-one -on -one hour with Derek, and myself. I'm only on for about 10 or 15 minutes. Apparently I'm too technical. I've learned that. I'm growing as a person that I don't even speak well when it comes to marketing either. Not only do I not engage people, I'm talking way over everybody's head and I'm frustrated when they don't. How do you not know everything about marketing like I do or distressed properties? Apparently that is the wrong attitude. And again, according to my therapist, that's not my opinion still. So I put Derek on the call. What you guys really want to do is role play and work on the scripts at the door and get comfortable with the clients. And that's great. We also do three coaching calls a week, Tuesday, Wednesday. We've streamed this for the last couple of days. I haven't quite figured out how to do it when we're on the road yet. It's a really good trick of being in two places at once. Next week, it'll go back to normal. Actually, on Thursday, it goes back to normal. Uh, Tuesdays is coaching with me. I do marketing. We do landing pages. We do anything I can think of that will help increase your brand or your presence. 
I am at your disposal. I am at your service, as well as those that I coach. Wednesday, Derek labeled it potpourri. And I don't know why it makes me think of Jeopardy, because he said Wednesday is the potpourri call. Generally, maybe I miss Alex. I don't know why potpourri makes me smile so much. It is kind of a potpourri day. I talk about whatever I want to talk about. And on Thursdays is nothing but closing with Derek. We have a library, Derek did, did talk about it. The first module is very simple. It is the basics of what you need. Plus, lots of documents and videos that my partner David Bartels and I put together over the past decade that are beneficial. Do you want to work with investors? How do you talk about this with investors? What do you do when you're bringing in other what if? Like, there is no what if. I had this discussion yesterday. There is no what if in distress that we haven't answered at some point. Shot a video, created a document for it for you to take to the front door. And this is the basic package. Uh, and it's pretty deep. And I just got asked last week by my coaching students to create an entire forbearance package. They want new stuff. Ask the banker about forbearance. What will really happen after forbearance? Did you know? They want a did you know on forbearance. Would you like to know what they want on the did you know? Did you know since you took a forbearance, you're not going to be able to borrow any more money from another bank? Would that document be powerful? Yeah, it might be. Might be. We'll see. I like watching the results too. They're all customizable. You can put your own uh, information on every single one of our docs, plus of course, all the marketing pieces you will ever need. The second module within the online community is the community itself. Shout out to Brendan Rendo, he's probably on the call. He was the first one to post in it. I keep waiting for people to start asking questions and I keep waiting for my students to step up and answer questions so that I don't have to answer questions, which is wink, wink, what I'm after, uh, truth, all my coaching students know my emails. They know my cell phone. They know to text me. We are a family. I can't hide from them. Uh, we just moved into a brand new office. We now allow our students to schedule time and come to the office and meet with me. It will be a dramatic letdown for you to come and meet me in my work and home environment. I dress like a cult leader, strangely, all in black and just kind of move about silently like a ghost. Jen and Derek, on the other hand, love to engage people. I love to hide quietly in my studio. This is true. But we are available. You can actually schedule a meet with us. How many of the coaches out there can you actually go to their office and meet them? That's one of the things I'm proud of because I've bought stuff like everybody else. I'd love to meet my coach, not wait in a line at an event to take a photo op with him. And last is the Zagorski Archives. Any Blacklist fans in this room? I look and ask every day. So far on this tour, we have had one person. It's not getting removed. I told you one person would be enough for the Blacklist joke that makes me smile every day. I recommend it. I don't think NBC needs the help, but I'd recommend the TV show. Okay, this is the Zagorski Archives. What it really is, have you guys been to other events when they do the, this is a $10,000 value, sign up now. And it's, yeah, all right. yeah, cool, dude, cool. So basically you were gonna give this to me anyway, but you wanted to place extra value on it. I actually know how that works. This is actually my life's work. I went through eight terabytes of data. I went down a trip of memory lane of X's and photos and documents and videos and woo, that was stressful and many therapy sessions. What came out of it is the Zagorski archives. It looks pretty simple on the surface. It only looks like six folders that fly out there in the cloud. Where is everyone? Okay, here's what's inside of it. Every single document that I've ever created on the subject of distressed property or marketing. In fact, it's thousands of marketing pieces and concepts and ideas on the concept of distressed properties, probate, expired, you name it, I've gone after it with different forms of marketing throughout the years. Pages and pages. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, why? Somebody asked me this yesterday. What if? What if I took your marketing and did this? What if I did this? What? 
I've already answered all the what ifs because I answered them for myself and I've actually created all the documents. So if you send me an email saying, what if X, Y, Z, you're going to get an answer like Derek when he was looking for, hey, I need a closing line. I literally said, go into the archives, look for Nino, and I left the room. That's how that whole story. He's compiled it down because he doesn't like asking me questions because I give him quick, simple, dumb answers like Nino. And that's really probably how it went. In my mind, I gave him a distinct explanation where to find it, what video, what event. Uh, he has now told me that all I said was the word Nino and walked out of the room. Probably. Nino was 2010 or 11's Mastermind Summit when he got up there in front of my then business partner, David Bartels, the man who gave me his distressed company recently. And in front of a room, did the most mind-blowing thing I've ever seen. He made David and I stop working in the back of the room. We were sitting there clacking away on our computers, not paying attention to yet another speaker at one of our events. And he said, well, I just asked him a simple question. And he said it. And David and I stopped and looked at each other. And we both looked at each other simultaneously and said, is that the greatest line you've ever heard? It sticks with me to this day. It's a great line. It doesn't really do it justice to tell you how great that line is. It is that successful a line. It's in there. That entire training event's in there. In fact, we've actually shot all the videos to go with all the documents over the years. For like the guy I got yesterday. He's not gonna like it, he's probably on the call, right? I'm gonna tell this story right now. We have Derek generally call everybody before the event. And Derek asked, was talking to this individual. I'm not going to say names. He's going to sign up and he knows it. He gave Derek a hard time. Well, will there be any value? Are you going to teach me any actionable information? Like, or is it just going to be one of those selling things? Guess what? He came to the event yesterday. This is no joke. <laughs> he came to the event yesterday and he was the first guy up to talk to me and started doing what if. Why did you create all of this stuff? for you. You are that guy. You are that guy in my life that wants to know everything like me. And that's why you're talking to me because you want the what ifs answered. I've shot all the what ifs with investors, with everything you can humanly think of. By the way, he's signing up and joining us. The same guy who, when Derek first told me about the call, this is true. I was going to have him call him back and tell him, do not have that man show up. <laughs> I'm going to say something that I'm going to regret, and it'll be added to the long laundry list of things that I've done at events that I have to apologize for later on. Certainly to the CFO, the COO, and, you know, working for three women is hard. It's hard. I'm scared of them. I really am. I didn't know. I, you know, I've been engaged a few times. I've been, you know, no, I'm afraid of these three women. They scare the crap out of me. They're smarter than me. They're kinder than me. Uh, did I say smarter? I'll say it again. They're smarter than me. They're really mean. Smart, strong, beautiful women are dangerous creatures. They are very, very, very dangerous. Dangerous creatures. Uh, this is, again, one of those moments, and I like this, and this is pretty much what I'm going to close on. Everybody does do an added value bonus to their systems, more or less. I just stuck it in. Lately, People have been trying to pitch to get new listings. You need to write a book to build credibility. I'm sure you've probably seen something like that come across your desk or see somebody else try to do it. It's a very common practice in real estate. I was completely amused with it the first time I heard it about a decade ago when I went into marketing. So over the years, I've actually compiled uh, eight different white label books. So let me tell you all what you get when you sign up. You will be a named best-selling author on eight different books that you can put your name on, that you can give out to your clients. They are all certified. We've moved that many copies of them. They're all best sellers. I've had people put these on Amazon and I'll even give you a final piece of advice on this topic. Remember the friend who said my marketing didn't work? Still love her. Never gonna get over that. However, I'm gonna give you the thing she did with a white label book. Maybe it says a lot about her. 
She took her white label book to Romans in Pasadena, had a wine and cheese event for a book signing on a book she did not write. It's still the funniest, coolest thing I know of on some level that she did that and actually probably giggled and told people how hard it was to write the book. I would love for you to do the same thing, <laughs> okay? That's why there are eight of them. I'm probably going to add more. I will keep compiling real estate books that you can be the best-selling author of just because it brings me that much personal amusement. So how do you join Home Advocates? There are three ways. You will not get an order form here. You guys will not be jammed links online. For those that are online, just go to homeadvocates.io. Click on join now. Both Jen and Gina are on the call. Send them a message right now. Now for you here today, you can become an EXP agent with us unless you're already an EXP agent. I'm sorry. We do not take agents that are already, no, it's not true. Uh, you can join us in the XP. I like it. I like agents to join me as long as you nod your head a lot. I've got to be honest. I'm kind of at the point where if you want me to mentor you and help you with marketing and doing pretty much everything, including creating your downline and about a hundred other things that we do special for EXP people, um, just nod your head and say thank you a lot. It, it'll be okay. We just got someone uh, recently in Arizona. She's like, do you need me to do anything? Not really. Just nod your head. It'll be great. I'll do the rest. We actually recruit for our agents, these events. Think about it. As an EXP person, if you were doing 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 with a live stream at the same time in your market constantly, we, we're okay. We'll send Derek. I mean, I'm not really good with people, but Derek is, so it's cool. Uh, I'm prepared to send Derek to your town when you sign up. <laughs> I prefer to stay at home in my crazy yoga robe. Uh, you can invest a one-time fee. If you're with the XP already, or you wanna stay with your brokerage, we have a one-time fee. We have forms in the back of the room, and I'll say this for everybody online. Guess what the price is gonna be when the pandemic is over? If you think it's going to be the same that it is right now, you would be completely wrong. You can see the price when you go to the back. We have forms that say $5,000. I don't think that's enough. I think it should be more in my humble opinion. Because we all know this in real estate, they're not going to show up until the sky is legitimately falling. That's a real estate thing. Nobody makes conversions to short sales or distressed properties until it's already happening. Until then, it's a great real estate market. It won't be in eight days. I'll get this right. Eight days. So I'm going to say this for everybody on the call and everybody here. You got eight days. And I've already told you what the price is going to be. We actually have a discounted price for those online, for those that are here. Just go see Derek. It's just that simple. We'll make it affordable. We'll make it easy. It's a one-time fee. I do not want monthly coaching fees out of you. You are my coaching student for life. I will find you. Okay? Uh, and here is why I don't do monthly fees. I bought other programs. Much like you. I've been an agent. Why would anybody that I'm paying a monthly fee to, who's got me on a one-year contract no matter what, at least that's what the contract says, at $1,000 a month, have any reason to really teach me anything about marketing? Ever think about that? I do. Every time somebody wants me to sign a guaranteed contract for a year. So it's going to take me a year to learn everything about your system? Question mark? Uh, so I just do one fee. Come and go as you like. You're my client for life. My system is guaranteed for life as well. You will, uh, if you're an existing student, I upgrade you into the newer stuff. You always get your old stuff. I've never taken anything away and held the new stuff out like a shiny dangly object. Yes, there's new stuff. It's a different system. Your system is still there. It's the same system that still works. But if you want guaranteed areas, guaranteed leads, me to do your follow-up, and you think you're getting it for your 2010 price, wow, 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 wow. I know I have coaching students, wow. We actually give you guys areas now. I've kind of grown as a person on these topics. Uh, I think that's everything. Oh, and it's all guaranteed. It's a lifetime guarantee. If you don't get face-to-face, -face, Zoom to Zoom, call to call, whatever it is, I'll give you your money back. In fact, I'll tell you how to get double back with me when you're not happy. 
go on PayPal, because I use PayPal to process, and dispute it. While that's happening, then you send me a note telling me I'm not paying you back quick enough for the system that didn't get you a listing, keywords, because I want to use it as a testimonial. Um, and tell me how many appointments you got. That's all. I, I would appreciate that. Just tell me how many appointments you had. Makes me happy. And uh, I will more than likely send you a check. And then by then, PayPal will have caught up on your dispute or your credit card company dispute. And you will get double your money back for the price you've invested. I make it very clear. I'll make it very clear here. That was very cynical on my part. And there are people writing that down probably on this call. God, I put you face to face. I guarantee it. I don't care if you start tomorrow. I don't care if you start in one year. I don't care if you start in five years. It works. It still works. In fact, it's working too well. Richard, our newest student, is getting real-time data out of Vegas. He put up three, got two callbacks, had an appointment on Friday. I would never quote that as a, that's the way it should be in your market. No, that's abnormal. That's a really good response, Ray. That's unbelievable you got one appointment on a Friday after putting up three marketing pieces. It's not unusual. It's not. The trick is you have to physically go put the marketing up and you physically have to meet with them. If I could figure out how to automate the rest of the process, I wouldn't need you, to be honest. I'd be on a boat in the Amalfi right now telling you via Zoom, because I was piped in on an EXP something, Lee is the biggest real estate tycoon on the planet. How'd you do it? Took real estate agents out of it. Figured it out. I do it all online now. It's amazing. I have a virtual person show up. It's kind of what that is, what I'm doing right now. And of course, uh, EXP joining us or otherwise, this is another truism. But when you sign up with us and you do a couple of deals with us, we are working on uh, making it available to do forbearance and loan modifications for customers. It's taken a lot of legal stuff and escrows and all kinds of lions and tigers and bells and whistles, oh my, to make it happen to be the first real estate driven company, non attorney, to be able to assist homeowners in the United States as advocates for a fee. We're working on it. And we will. And we'll split it with you, the real estate agent. So you can get paid weekly. That is our goal. I am building most of this stuff on the fly. I actually have a team on that project right now. We also have an iBuyer program. You can bring your own client uh, for your own clients or otherwise. We want you to get full commission. Our, our funnel will pay full fair market value. Just that simple. You're not looking for an equity spread or anything crazy. It's all part of the package that we provide for you. If you do two deals with us, I'll give you back all your money as well. We want to be in a partnership with you. I said it earlier, and I fundamentally mean this. This is a family, an extraordinarily dysfunctional family, because I am their leader, uh, whether or not I want to accept it. That form is in the back of the room. For those of you that are online, homeadvocates.io. Go ahead and click on that button. It has been a blast to speak to you all here today. I had a good time up here. I only got teary-eyed twice, which